Hey there, everybody. Hot Stinky. Welcome back uh, to Doki Doki. All right, so in the last episode, uh, we joined the literary club and we wrote our first poem, which had suicide in it and uh, was apparently cute. So we're still continuing on with Doki Doki. Go ahead and like and subscribe. I definitely do appreciate it. Let's get into it. All right. I, I saved it the last time. Hint, you can use skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. Okay. And did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Nasuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks, I suppose. Yours is cute. Cute. No one likes to hear that their shit is cute. Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? She did not have any symbolism in her fucking poem. She just described what animals do. I didn't see it. It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How the f... Saying a bird can fly. Come on. I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Well, I don't have... I do have a couple of suggestions. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which I did. Because it made me, which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Fukmi did too. So based on that, I'm gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my own writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Uh... And Fook me liked my poem too, you know. He would tell me it was he was inspired by it. Did I say that? I don't remember saying that. And Nasuki suddenly stands up. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, uh, that's not what I meant. Uh, you're just Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Fook me appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? No, of course I'm not. I was If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh! Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Fukmi started showing up. Well, Fukmi, did they get bigger? Nasuki! Um, Nasuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you... Man, they are shutting everybody up. I don't like the fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Fook me. Later, Yuri. Later, I will fook you, but not right now. We're discussing something. She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She can get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective than, it, than this wouldn't have happened in the first place. That's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason. That means you should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Fook me. Wait, there's a reason why we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to con convey complex feelings and meanings to the most effectively. Avoiding them is not unnecessarily limiting in itself. It's also a waste. You understand that, right, Fook me? Uh, I don't understand shit. How did I get dragged to this in the first place? Because I have to open up my big fucking mouth. But whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Um... Help me, Sayori! Nasuki! Glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turned to Yuri. Yuri... I got nothing. Her expression is defenseless. That I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori? Uh, yeah, everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Fook me. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. Man, they are fucking at it. It's unfair for others to inject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being, she would never... It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? How dare you, Yuri? How dare you? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why nobody likes you. Stop it. Sari is, uh, she's losing it. 
Masuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. And I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Nasuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented, except for me, because I fucking suck. So why are we fighting? Because, well... Also, Nasuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Just to, just to, just to clarify, because we're talking about boobs, everyone who they do, they do make a disclosure that everyone here is 18. Let's make that clear. Big and beautiful! <laughs> if Sayori wants to say they're big and beautiful, then I guess so far, so good, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Sayori stands up triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Mizuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, this kind of this kind that kind that, that kind of embarrasses me. I'm I'm fumbling on my words. Ha ha! Nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. So fook me. We're both fooked. Well, I guess that means Sari is amazing in her own way, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. How is she going to get herself hurt? I I. Uh, that makes the two of us. That just seems like a weird thing to say. You can count on me. Monica sw smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Yeah, we haven't really talked to Monica at all. Okay, everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I say it was worth it. It was all right, mostly. Fook me, how about you? Yeah, I'd say about the same. It was the neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Why? It caused a fight. Why would we do this? Maybe you learned something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. Fook me, I guess so, I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poem everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job of impressing those I want to impress. I doubt to myself with a newfound determination. But who the fuck am I trying to impress, though, with my poems? Fook me! Ready to walk home? I guess. Let's go, Sayori. Uh, it truly has been a while since Sayori, Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say that I'm not enjoying it, either. Well, Sayori is supposed to be my friend. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between y Yuri and Nasuki, that kind of thing happened often. Oh, no, 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 no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You you don't you don't hate them, do you? Uh, no, I don't hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. We're all, we're all friends. We're all friends. I don't hate them. I just want your opinion. That's all. I can see why they're making good, why they make good friends with you. Whoo. You know, Fook me. It's nice that I got to spend time with you in the club today. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. Well, what's not to fucking like? I'm fucking awesome. Uh, every day is going to be so much fun. Ah, fuck me. I mean, fuck me. It looks like Sioria still hasn't got caught up into the situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Yes, it needs to stop there. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder, and I said that... I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an eternal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. What we got? Oh, I got another little mini game. Okay. Uh, let's see. Kitty, everything fun, wonderful, just need dark. Doki, doki! Uh, my disaster. Uh, kiss, I guess. Um, all these suicide. Who the fuck wants to put suicide in their fucking in their fucking poem? Um, embrace. I like games. Uh, f f I like chocolate. I do like bunnies though too. Let's go bunny. Um, I like the daydream. Graveyard. What the fuck, man? I swear. Um, poof. 
Let's go ocean. Uh, well, I like the rain. I do like music. Uh, what the fuck is Kawe? Kawe. Um, adventure, I guess. Uh, I wish I could fly. Oh, these are all going to live to uh, Sayori's. Um, dream? Anime, for sure. I do love my bed. I do love marshmallows. Massacre. Yeah, let's throw massacre in there. Just to throw it in there between pillows and marshmallows. Uh, not death. We don't need death. Um, imagination, I guess. I do enjoy a glass of milk. Uh, happy. Happiness. And of course, we got to go with horror or socks. I'm going to go with horror. All right. Shit's crazy, man. You know, they pass it. It's time for the club meeting already. Time's flying. We've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the classroom, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Fukmi. Say, Ari. Looks like you're in a good mood today. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. Well, that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh -huh. so Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. You had no fucking money. I see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk... Or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I can lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves the one option. <laughs> Give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. What the fuck are you laughing at, Yuri? Sorry. What the fuck are you laughing at, Yuri? Uh, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh -huh. I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Fook me to let tell Fook me to let me borrow some money. That's don't get me involved with like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just? I didn't mean to that. I got so absorbed into my book. You. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's. There's no way you could think like that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of, inside all of us, isn't there? Hee <laughs> hee. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys to. She would bring me to the club before she even told me. But 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 you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. And that is a solid fact. I would not. If there was no cupcakes, I wouldn't be here to begin with. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me some more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks her in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Whoop! I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but I just did. Flop, flop. Kaya! Ow, what was... A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry, glances around. Is this a miracle? Is it because I paid my restitution? Retribution, Sayori. It's retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Haha. -ha. I was I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Nasuki. That was nice of you. I'm so happy. Sorry hugs the cookie. Geez, just 
eat it. Sorry, Raptor Lee tears open the Raptor and takes a big fight. So good. Woof, 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 woof. Story Sonny claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Well, that's what you get for eating it too fast. Like, who the fuck does that? You're going through a lot just over one cookie. Nasuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, you look really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do I think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Uh, Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Nasuki, then wraps her arms around her. Jeez Louise, I get it, I get it. Fook me. Fook me. Cookie still in hand, Nasuki reaches up to the nudge Sari off of her. Mm. Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Nasuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously do that? Did you just bite my fooking cookie? Fooky cookie? Mouthful, Sari trots away to safety. You and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori nothing because Naisuke glasses around and Monica isn't even in the club room? Where the fuck is she? Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. She's usually on time. I'm just assuming. I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had to do something today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she she has a, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Maybe, maybe, but I'm not here to judge on that. Oh, that's true. Excuse me, son of the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong willed. B -b 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 boyfriend what on earth are you talking about monica quizzically glances at me oh never mind that what held you up anyway uh well my last period today was study hall and to be honest i kind of just lost track of time ha ha that makes no sense though you would have heard the bell ring at least and probably because monica seems like she's always on top of her p's and q's i must have just not have heard it since i was practicing piano piano i wasn't aware you played music at all monica I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. Why is this something that someone just wants to learn? That just seems uh, that just seems kind of weird to me. But what do I know? Uh, so here he is, like a little older sister. Well, my older sister better not do that shit. I fucking, I fucking punch her. I wouldn't. That's Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I feel like people wouldn't actually talk like this. But that's just me. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, fook me. You fooking better. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean to any pressure or anything like that. Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck to you. Thanks. I really don't care about your piano, though. So I didn't miss anything at all, did I? Uh, nothing really, said Sayori being a hungry person and just eating people's food. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Nasuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Let me get some coffee. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. I bet she fucking did. Yuri's back to her book and Nasuki disappeared into the closet. Where am I going? Where am I going? Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? Well, I got two fucking books. I got one from Sayor, uh, not Sayor, I got one from Nasuki and one from Yuri. I should be able to read something. I guess I can always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but did I read the manga that Nasuki gave me? But I feel a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening to in a serious conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm... That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? Well, just tell them you got cupcakes, and they'll come. After they come, we can do the 
we can do the thing to speak to... Oh, shit. Fook me. After they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sarah's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberately deliberating like this. Oh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? It absolutely would. Get them some cupcakes. Bribe them. Why not? Makes sense to me. What kind? Well, I guess we could bake some cupcakes, like I fucking said. Good thinking. Nasuki would love to do that. Or you're just assuming she would love to do that. You're right. Nasuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. You always eat cupcakes, it is. You just had a cookie, how are you hungry? Jesus, anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling in the NCR, is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, she has trouble finding any motivation at all. Siri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get me, get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder why, it, what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh shit, fuck. God damn, Sayori, why are you all up in my face? I open, open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Sorry, wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. I fucking wish it was. That would be freaking awesome. Does, your sc does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. But, but, but Nasuki likes anime, or she likes manga, at least. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh, not every day. It's not very convincing. How many days this past week have I gotten? Up, have you gotten up on time? That is irrelevant, and it's a secret. I knew it. Come on, fook me. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that, Sayori. Look, it's written all over you. Sayori glances at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. Your bow looks fine. It looks fine. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Jesus. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. I seem pretty honest. I seem like an honest, good friend. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh. Fook me, that was rough. That was super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> That's kind of a weird view. I don't... Uh, this is so funny. Why is your why is your why is your foot like that? What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Stupid. It's okay though. I'm very happy we're like this, aren't you? Ah, uh, fuck me. Why not? I guess. Be careful. The button might come off. Why would it come off? Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Of course. Makes sense now. Does this thing even fit you properly? It did when I bought it. Oh, Jesus, Sayori. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about, Sayori? It means my boobs got bigger again. Fook me. Fook. Fook me. Jesus, that's twice now that they've... Oh, man. Don't say that out loud. Exactly, Sayori. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now. So, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. 
That's so much better. Sorry, put your arms out and twirls around. So if, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying it? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. That is true. You want me to do things like that, I guess. And take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things, Sayori. Ook me, I didn't say anything embarrassing. You did. Jeez, well anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier, fine. I'll go to bed earlier, you wake up earlier. It's a deal. I guess we are I guess we really are better taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. I guess so. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you. Okay, everyone. Monica said they call us out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Fook me! I can't wait to read yours! Fook me, fook me, fook me. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Um, I'm still going to go Monica first. Just because she's the club leader. Hi again, fook me. Monica. How's the writing going? Stupidly, I guess. I'll take that as long as it's not going bad. I got options of suicide mixed in there with puppy dogs, so I don't know how the fuck it's going. Uh, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. I wouldn't either. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. So with that, I guess I'll just share my poem last with Sayori. You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sort of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you care about each other's well-being. And if you show it in a different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. You sure, you sure you're not reading it to it too much? I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look at your poem. I like the last one she did too. Save me. Uh, the colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless uh, cacophony, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, I apologize, of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. I, I, I don't know what that means. But okay. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Haha, <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like if you don't like it. Oh, I never said I didn't like it. Fook me, I didn't say that. It's just kind of thing I've never seen before, I guess. Kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I write the lines really lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's it about though. Uh -huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So put in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Why the, why the fuck would I need to save my game? Why the fuck would I need to do that? Why would you be saying that? You never know when you might change your mind. What the fuck are you talking about? Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? It's not. What am I even talking about? Uh, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. 
I'm going to save because that was. Yeah, I'm going to overwrite. That was weird. Why would you tell me to to save? Uh, I'm going to go Yuri next. I'm just going to go up the list. I'm just going to go up the list with uh, Sayori being the last one. Hold on, give me a second. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Fukmi. Hold on. I'm going to be ending this episode soon. Uh, well, we're going to finish the poems and then we'll end the episode. Well done, Fukmi. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Uh, it's nothing. I'm just happy to ins help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise, but why do I get the options of, you know, lollipop, puppy, love, suicide? Why? Why is that? Why? It doesn't make any sense. I see. Fook me. There's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon and urge. The moon, hold on. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Tavolian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feel myself and I feed myself again. Odd, but I liked it. I liked it. Hold on, okay. Um I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express visit Im imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that's that's I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I usually force to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing. People will make fun of me. Fook me. Fook me. Don't you have anything like that, Fook me? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone's a little has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Oh, okay. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. All right, try. Uh, Nasuki is next. She's going to hate my poem. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible. Thank you. But it's pretty disappointing pointing after your last one. Fook you. Then again, if this was as, as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I want to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this. I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sarah's poem from yesterday. And you think so? Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sarah has a type all of a sudden. 
well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? What's that supposed to mean? Someone like me? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Fook you! I'm no dead weight. That was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away like like letting go of a balloon. What in the fook? You could say we could take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. What is it about? Bicycles have wheels? Cars have s engines? Like, what, what, what's your poem going to be? Say it in the obvious? Oh, it's a little bit different, I guess. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? She likes spiders. Icky, wriggling, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Uh, okay. Amy has a lot of friends. I always hear her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. I absolutely 100% agree with that. Fuck spiders. Sorry. Fook spiders. But that's a, that's a weird ass uh, poem. Not bad, right? That was better than yesterday I get. Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. You hate Amy because she likes spiders. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is, an, is an, like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like that? Of course, it's not about how everyone thinks of my. That doesn't matter. I could be any. Babe, I, I messed up my words. I wrote about it easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you, like you did with Amy and her spiders. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as you're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? But you just talked shit about Amy and her spiders. I think people really need to learn respect for others for liking weird things. But you just talked shit about Amy and her spiders. Uh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Uh, did you say Yuri? She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, yours is pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not there's anything wrong with that. It's not like I would judge her or anything, but you just judged Amy. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try to be... I should try not to be so mean to her if she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to be taken away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. I, I will not remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Sure thing. All right. And we have Sayori left. Oh, my goodness. This is so good. Fook me. Uh, I love it. Fook me. Especially after yesterday's poem. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. But no, but really, I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Haha, uh -huh. jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Nasuki's. Are you sure you don't like it because I wrote Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a fook me poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. And if it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that is exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. 
Me neither, but uh, can I see what I write in my poems? Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Which one is it? Make up your mind. A little bit of both. Okay. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sari. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice, happy rainbow. She's too nice and too sweet for me. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Is it? Maybe I'm getting better for some of my feelings after all. Thanks, Fukumi. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. I don't like that first line. Uh, this is the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside within my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. It's a long poem. I, dust, I blow dust off the bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could, see, could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open it up and then come my friends. They come in in such a hurry. Do you, they want my bottles that much? I frankly put them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between, between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They're supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you I was going to write the best poem ever? Fook me, you did. I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, and you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've got pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. You you do that, Sari. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's so always had a habit of being getting obsessed with something before dropping it more than a week later. I wonder if it's one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone. What does Monica say that we're going to end the episode? We're all done reading each other's phones, right? I have something extra planned for today so everyone can come and sit in the front of the room. Is it about the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we're going to put together anything good in a few days. We just end up embarrassing ourselves and getting, instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well on last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Sure thing, Monica, whatever you say. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great, you know, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. I'm sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Performing what? Uh, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Fuck that. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah's so putting it all in the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Sarah, so who's been coloring the poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad, bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. 
I can't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Nasuki. I can never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sarah. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nasuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. So a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud in a room full of people. So I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. Thank you for apologizing, Monica. I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And that takes us standing in front of the room for two minutes, reciting a poem, then so fucking be it. Nasuki and Yuri remain silent. Siri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new numbers. Members! The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe. But... Looks like Nasuki doesn't have an argument left. Okay, fine. I just have to get over with it. Get it over with. Phew! Thanks, Nasuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. I guess I really don't have much of a choice. You do not. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. <laughs> That's a little too much to say, but okay, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, I went a little bit too far. Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off with everyone to help feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips her notebook. There was a microphone in her mind for self. Then she stands behind the podium. I'm going to save it right there. Boom. All right. So when we come back, we'll uh, we'll do the poem reciting. Um, this game is... This game is pretty weird. Um, I have no idea uh, it would be like this. Uh, where are we at? Okay. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it. Go ahead and like, subscribe. I definitely do appreciate it. Um, uh, when we come back, we'll do some more Doki Doki. This game is just fucking weird, but I love it. All right, you guys. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!